This video is brought to you in part by SecondChanceGaming.com. They are a direct sponsor of me and this channel, and so if you want to indirectly support the channel while also buying or selling cards for your own matches, your own tournaments, your own duels, your own purposes, your own needs, then definitely check out their site and see what they have to offer you. I'm a big fan of how they do business, and their pricing and shipping from what I've seen and experienced thus far are both top notch. So definitely check out their site, which is linked in the description, and let them know that Phoenix sent you. But with that out of the way, let's get straight into the video. Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is giving me another Yu-Gi-Oh! combo tutorial video and this time it is going to be on another mermail first turn combo for the nationals format now i know on the previous video a few people said that you know this isn't possible to play mermails going first with like the bahamut shark totally awesome spamming nonsense in link format and yes you are correct link format rule set completely kills Bahamut Shark summoning totally awesome from your extra deck because it is not possible unless you have a Link monster unlocking at least two zones, one of which is summon Bahamut Shark into, and then one of which is summon totally awesome into. I'm very, very aware of that, but currently we are in a very v important stage of the Yu-Gi-Oh time frame between now and Link format, and that is Nationals format. People are trying to go to Nationals, play a deck that they really enjoy or feel really confident in, and do well with said deck. They are trying to do that, and People very much enjoy Mermails now and don't really want to wait until Link format where the entire focus of the deck could shift to going back into playing going second you know, gameplay style if Link format is conducive to allowing that to be a good thing and all that sort of nonsense. So people that enjoy the deck want to play it now and not have to wait until Link rule set kicks in to ruin everything else for the Mermail deck to shift its focus. So that's what I've been trying to uh, focus on for at least the immediate time frame. But anyway... As pop <laughs> basically due to popular demand, I had a bunch of people that talked to me and contacted me, reached out to me via email, my Facebook fan page, my personal Facebook page, those of you who are friends on me there, and some people commented in the previous video that I did wanting more like detail on some of the things that I talked about because I mentioned some interesting things in the previous video uh, just when I was rambling about how maybe playing dupe frog is correct to have a bigger frog lineup um, like just various other things uh, in what I got asked like what my opinion of instant fusion for rare fish was uh, in terms of a uh, like play extender and all that sort of nonsense since Norden is gone but we do still want to be playing things like aqua spirit and uh, silent angler to be just level 4 extenders would instant fusion for rare fish also suffice like stuff like that I got asked a lot of things and so what I'm gonna be showing you today is a four card mermail combo that involves instant fusion and involves multiple frogs because people asked me questions about the multiple frog thing a little bit more in depth than they did about instant fusion specifically when I mentioned that dupe frog might be a good card to run to like just beef up the frog lineup some people contacted me and said well don't you brick with frog cards and all that sort of stuff? Like, don't wouldn't that can be conducive to like bad plays? Like, you don't want to open two frogs ever, right? And sort of, from the mindset of playing the deck going second, I can completely understand like how opening multiple frogs seems like it lowers your play ceiling a bit because the frogs are really, really like shining material going first rather than second. But it is definitely very good to open multiple frogs in the going first plays, specifically the first turn play, because of what it allows you to do with things like your Neptibus, which wasn't really that important in the past because we had Norden, which we could just instant fusion for, and it basically like allowed the sort of nonsense that's going to be happening in this combo to just happen naturally. But since first turn, you can very rarely trigger Neptibus's effect. The frogs actually just help you with that if you open multiple frogs, specifically Swap Frog plus either Ronin Toten, another Swap Frog, or like Dupe Frog. Obviously, if you open double Ronin Toten or like double Dupe Frog, you're not doing anything with those other than maybe discarding them for Teus or Megalo and all that sort of stuff. So the combo that I'm going to show you today involves these four cards, and the Instant Fusion could really literally be anything else, honestly. Um, it could be Aqua Spirit, it could be Silent Angler, although those are strictly worse than Instant Fusion for Rare Fish in this specific scenario, because both of them limit your like ability to make uh, Mulan Glacier alive. If you have Aqua Spirit or the Silent Angler, you're able to make Bahamut Shark, two totally awesomes and then end with an abyss sphere uh, with a heavy infantry in hand but if you have insta fusion you're able to make mulan glacia dweller totally awesome in place of that so you're able to deal with four cards rather than three uh, if you open with the uh, the aqua spirit or the silent angler then you're able to make two toads and have the rageki break you know interaction that abyss sphere gives you 
uh, but you are only dealing with three cards. Whereas with Instant Fusion, it's the best result, giving you the Mulan Glaze to take two cards out of your opponent's hand, and then you have a Toad to negate a card, and the Bisphere to be the Raigeki Break. But, so, basically, you have access to all this because of the fact that you have these two frogs in your opening hand. Having the double swap frog or the swap frog plus any frog allows you to do quite a lot in terms of what your play structuring can be because of what it allows you to do in terms of with your Neptabus turn one because Megalo can't tribute Neptabus turn one to get it to bring back your Dragoons which is actually a very very important limiting factor that you need to be you know understanding and mindful of when you're structuring combos and it takes up a spot on the field as well just chilling out there doing nothing but anyway so you start your combo off by normal summoning Neptabus sending Dragoons adding Dragoons and then off of the Dragoons search you're going to add a Mermail Abyss Megalo to your hand and now from here you're going to use the Swap Frog discarding what other, whatever other frog you had in your hand to special summon the Swap Frog and then use its effect to make sure Ronin Toten ends up in your grave. If you had Ronin Toten in your hand alongside Swap Frog that you discarded for it, then you just send a frog from deck to grave, whether it be Dupe Frog, Swap Frog, whatever. But you just want Ronin Toten in grave. Now, the important part about this is the fact that you opened multiple frog cards. Normally, Swap Frog is going to be bouncing itself to then discard another water or normal summon itself and then be able to send another frog to grave to banish for Ronin Toten, giving you your access into your totally awesome. Now, that doesn't need to happen because of the fact that you already had another frog piece to discard from your hand to special summon the Swap Frog, because Swap Frog can only bounce itself once per turn, and that is a big limiting factor of the card. But because we already have another frog here for the Ronin Toten, we can now use this Swap Frog's bounce in a different way that yields us a much better result. So we're going to use it to bounce that Neptabus that is just taking up space on the field. Because we can't trigger it with Megalo, even though we're going to be summoning Megalo from our hand this turn and right now, if the Me if the uh, Neptabus was still on the field, you would not be able to use Megalo's effect to tribute it, because there is no battle phase on the first turn of the game, and you cannot use Megalo's effect during any turn where there is not a battle phase that can be conducted. So you can't activate its effect in main phase two, or during turns where you can't conduct your battle phase. So there's that thing that you there's those things that you have to worry about. But so. You're going to discard the Neptabus and the Dragoons for the Megalo. You're going to summon the Megalo and search for your Abyss Sphere. And then your Dragoon search is going to get you a Mulan Glacia. And so your Neptabus brings back Dragoons. You get Mulan Glacia in hand. You get Abyss Sphere in hand. So it works very well for you in all sorts of functions and manners. Now, you're going to use the Instant Fusion here. Now, if you had Aqua Spirit or Silent Angler then you're going to be doing uh, a little bit, you know, of a different play string. You're not going to be searching the Mulan Glaze because it's, it's going to become really hard to drop unless you can put another Water Engrave for Aqua Spirit or unless you can, you know, summon Mulan Glaze before you special Silent Angler from hand because obviously Silent Angler prevents you from summoning monsters from hand for the rest of the turn after you summon it. Uh, so there's all of that to consider. But Instant Fusion for Rare Fish being the best result, you're going to overlay these two into a Dweller. Now, the reason you're going specifically for Dweller here is because it's kind of strong in the format against things like True Draco. It's good against Zodiac Ram Ram, so that's that's a that's an interesting interaction as well. But the main reason is because you don't have space to do Bahama Shark into Toad. Um, that's the biggest thing. The biggest thing is that you just don't have space. Uh, we we only have five monster zones still until Link set until Link format sets in. So that's something you need to consider. But so you detach the dragoons off Dweller just to trigger it, um, or you could wait. It's completely up to you, but we're triggering it here and now because that makes the Mulan Glacia drop live. And we detach Dragoons so that we can specifically search for Atlantean Heavy Infantry because that is what we want to pair up with the Abyss Sphere. That's what turns the Abyss Sphere into a real trap. You flip Abyss Sphere, summon Mermail Abyss Pike from your deck or Abyss Turge, and then you activate its effect to discard Atlantean Heavy Infantry for cost. Its effect will be negated by Abyss Sphere, so you will not get to add back or search a level 3 water monster with Pike or Turge but your infantry will use its effect to pop a card, and that's where you get the value. But so from here, we have five waters in grave and a live Ronin Toten. So we're going to special summon the Mulan Glacia from our hand and take two cards out of our opponent's hand. And now, from here, now that we've gotten the Mulan Glacia on the board and we don't have to worry about numbers, arbitrary numbers, we can now special summon the Ronin Toten 
and then make these into Totally Awesome. And so, the Dweller here is actually going to make the Totally Awesome rather large as well. Being 2700 is very respectful. Like, it's very respectable to be that large as a Solemn Judgment type card. I mean, just look at Cyber Dragon Infinity. That thing normally gets between 2500 and 2700, and it's pretty hard to deal with when it gets that large. Um, in terms of the like historic like things that this game is dealt with But so what you end up with is you end up with this Mulan Glace you end up with this totally awesome Your opponent still has two cards in hand so you didn't take out three cards like with the previous combo But you get to negate a card with totally awesome and then the Abyss Sphere gets to stifle whatever play your opponent has Because you still have an open card zone which means you can Abyss Sphere into your Mermail Abyss Pike and do things like that to uh, that I already said for discarding like the heavy infantry popping a face up card and then you have things like that. Now, obviously, this combo can change based off what the other variable you have in terms of what the fifth card in your hand was. But basically, the main purpose of this was to show you what you can do specifically with opening multiple frogs alongside of a swap frog. Because people were like talking to me, is like, don't you open multiple frogs and consider that a brick? It's like, not necessarily. There's definitely a lot of plays you can do that are facilitated specifically by opening multiple frogs. This being one of them. The ability to bounce that useless Snaptobis to your hand just to discard it with the Megalo you searched and be able to proc back your Dragoons to get another search in the turn is a fantastic way to be going about business on your first turn plays. And like I said earlier in the video, if you have Aqua Spirit or Silent Angler in place of that instant fusion, the only thing that changes it is that you don't get to summon the Mulan Glacia, and so instead of making Dweller, you don't worry about room, so then you just make Bahamut Shark and summon a second Toad instead. So this will always be invalidating three to four of your opponent's cards because of the capabilities that you know you have presented to you with opening multiple swaps, being able to rotate the Neptibus to your hand and discard it to trigger both of its effects turn one, which is normally pretty hard to do, and then all that sort of stuff just kind of snowballs. And when you have the Mulan Glace play, you get the added benefit of a Dweller on the board, which is very good against True Draco because of the fact that all of their spells and traps trigger engraved to try and remove stuff from your field and then it just ends up being really easy in that matchup as well because all of your stuff is getting boosted by Dweller until you detach that last material. Totally Awesome gets to do its thing. You have an instant out for Diagram or Heritage or uh, Disciples of the True Draco Phoenix uh, because of the fact that you have you know a Visphere into your infantry and you can do things like that so it becomes really hard for that deck to get off the ground and that is a big big plus in your favor but that's going to be it for this video and it for this combo tutorial again let me know if you guys like this format of video in the comments down below hopefully the webcam behaved i have no way of knowing until i edit the video and then that that just you know we're kind of locked into that but hopefully i can get a better setup in the future where the webcam is a completely separate recording entity because the ram on my computer is being literally strangled by running Yu-Gi-Oh pro running obs running the logitech webcam software as a separate thing so that I'm able to integrate it all smoothly and seamlessly. And then, for these videos, I have two Yu-Gi-Oh! Pros hosted so that, like, there's nobody sitting there waiting for me to film a video. It's literally just another client that's open on my other monitor, <laughs> just waiting to get diddled by whatever combo I'm doing for the day. So, hopefully everything has worked and hopefully everything has behaved and I can just close this video out edit it and everything will be fine but anyway as always guys thanks for watching let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below and all that sort of nonsense links as always are in the description of my facebook and patreon pages if you want to support the channel directly the patreon is the best way to do so if you want to support my ability to make content into the future get better equipment do all that sort of stuff and if you want to you know basically just support something that you really like in the best way possible then patreon best way to do so and you'd have my eternal gratitude for doing so but other than that i mean I don't know what more I could show you for Mermail combos, but I guess I could come up with a few uh, for the current format, or I could start looking into Link format with different decks and stuff like that. I don't know. Let me know what your opinions on that are in the comments down below, guys. But other than that, as always, thanks for watching, as I've already said. Thanks for your time, as usual, guys, and take care. I will see you in the next video.